Can you break that? You, earlier you said something about before the subsidy is removed, before we go to the seven-year plan, you said they should be, let's return to the fundamentals. Yes. What are these fundamentals? For me, it, 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 it's a monumental disgrace that something in which we have um, what economists call a competitive advantage, the oil and gas, if you have a developed or if you had allowed, because I believe it was sabotaged, the petrochemical and industries and refineries, if you take it, will create thousands and thousands of top quality jobs. This is the sort of thing that the government should think of first if it is in place. And somehow there's still some distortion. We say, well, we played our best card. For me, the PDP, the PDP has been in power for, since uh, this democracy, 12 ODS plus. And every time you tell me something new, Nigeria did not start today. When, when you listen to the argument of the government spokesman, it will think that all of us are suffering from collective amnesia. We don't have any memory beyond when uh, uh, Jonathan uh, came on board as the president. We have to go back. It is, I relate to you based on what I know. So first and foremost, the government, if they say that they must have to do all the money being frittered away, who accounts for them? Is there anything because we can it's do, fundamental. Sorry, is, there, is there anything we can do, constitutionally speaking, to stop government from going ahead to remove the subsidy? Yeah, why not? Why not? We haven't looked to the, uh, strictly about the, uh, uh, you know, litigating the matter. I must tell you, and I mean, but I think when you look at it, you look at the constitution and then um, the, uh, uh, you know, the, the, the very basis of government to exist is for the benefit of the country. And when you crunch the numbers. But if you're looking at that benefit of the country, from all that the, the, the government position is that when this is done, it will benefit the country. Because according to the government's position, what everybody is looking at, don't remove fear, so we're looking at the small picture. Government is looking at the bigger picture. Because when that is removed, it will be plowed into making, ameliorating the, the strain that the removal would have caused on the lives of Nigerians. Is that not a better no, picture? No, so let to me look tell at? you something. You see, like I keep saying, let us know where the rain started to get us. Obasanjo, his time like three years ago, Oh, they were going to start, um, you know, express rail line from Lagos to Kano. By the delivery time, we should have been riding on, you know, train going to Kano if we want. Why is that project? You see, the government has filtered away trust. Part of these things is a question of trust. You see, so first and foremost, who makes the first move? The government must put in place, for example, for me, if you do not have the private people willing to come in and invest in primary, the issue is so fundamental. It has national security implications that the government, on its own, can build refineries and then hand over. If the, the problem is that it will go the way of Nigerian Airways, you build refineries and then get people to run it. This thing should be in place. Well, they have told you that the prices, I mean, even if they do that, People are willing to actually build their own refineries here in the country, but the prices are not competitive. People have asked, why is it that the major multinationals have their, they have a they, 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 they have a downstream sector in other parts of of the of Africa, and they don't even have in Nigeria? Why would Shell have uh, be operating here and not even have one single filling station? It's because the prices here are not competitive. It's not so much the price; it's the price of doing business, which will go back to the same thing about where the rain started to beat us corruption it's, we, about, see, it's about the regulated price why would i want to go into so much effort to do a business and then you tell me at what price to sell my goods it was let's take for instance the case of the landlord's issue here in lagos yes. when the state government said well we will ha you will have to regulate you know how you what tenor you would uh, rent out your house for Those people were like, why would i build my own house and then the government would tell me at, uh, how to rent it out that is that is unacceptable and that's basically what a host of people are saying in the oil no, industry you, you go back, you know, you take it at one level, step down. All these other places, people are not dependent on PMS and diesel the way we are. 
In United Kingdom, they tried to just remove a little, um, you know, um, a little addition to the PMS, and the, the House of Parliament said no. It brings, me, it brings me back to your argument. It means that what you are saying, I mean, you've talked about the issue of trust, the fact that the government has frittered away trust and will have to gain the trust of the people again. <laughs> In fact, you made mention of the Abacha era, where when finally some it was deregulated somewhat, the savings went to the PTF uh, fund, which was actually used used for things that we can still see till today. Yeah. So are you saying in essence that if the government can actually earn the trust of the people again and prove that it will use that savings wisely and properly, you will be willing to let go of the subsidy? Yes, that is one big if. But what we're saying is that to earn that trust certain things as the politicians will say will have to be on ground. First and foremost, if we have uh, refineries working and all this things, and we still now see that the people can't, uh, or that the proprietors cannot do better but to have it, then we'll, we'll, we'll let it, we'll, we'll, we'll have to go with it. But the point is that the government has to make the first move or make several moves. And then, as you're saying this, in places where people have alternatives, in any city, cities much you know, uh, with much less population than Lagos, you have mass transit within and without the city. So people are so dependent on this. So in these other places, people come to tell me, you have a choice. I get into a tube. I know people in London, they can't find a way and they live there for years. For the simple reason, they're always going underground with the tube. So they don't drive, they don't even use the buses. So in other words, if the government is going to put all of that uh, amenities in place, uh, how, much of time First, would, how much of time would you want to give to them before they take off the subsidy? I've told you the MBA position comes with a seven-year time frame. And let me also tell you something about trust. The question of petroleum subsidy is fundamental. I would have expected all things being equal, that the president during his campaign, we see this in America, talking about taxes. I'm going to increase taxes. I'm going to remove these things. It's like ambush. We'll give you a mandate, and then you want to do something that's so fundamental about our lives. No, that's not what we voted you for. Because if it was on the front banner, such a major issue, then between the president and Buhari, who's his main challenger, they probably will come and tell us what, and what, 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 what if, uh, if this plan is just coming in from his economic advisors he just constituted his uh, cabinet so it's very likely that this particular move is from his cabinet you don't wake up one morning and say you want to be president of even the little position of chairman of the nigerian bar association which i just linguished a few months ago i didn't just wake up one morning i knew what I thought, you know, the landscape, what these pro problems were. The problem of fuel subsidy or not has been with us for a long time. It's fundamental. For me, even the government of, uh, there's a moral issue as it concerns even the government of Ebele Jonathan, President Jonathan, that you just wait, we gave you, the uh, majority of Nigerians gave their mandate, and then you come back and say, guess what? I'm going to tax you out of extinction because basically that's, that's what's going to happen. And for me also, you look at, apart from the economics, you also look at the politics. There is a security dimension to it. The, when is, whether you like it or not, there's going to be hardship in the short and medium term. We have security issues all, all over the country, and this is what we want to do. So the more time for me is we debate it some more, have a time frame like the MBA has said, and between which time you take certain steps, because part of the MBA position is that you repeal the PPPPRA Act of 2003, because also everybody agrees that that's also a major source of they, you know, the drain pipe. Yes, people come here. You say, oh, they bring trailers. They move this. Nobody is there to to check. There's no reason why, for me, you must insist that fuel will sell the same price in Lagos and in Damatro.